Okay. Lori Thainer. Is Lori here? I'm here. Yep. Thank you, Lori. Take your time. Good evening. I think we've reached that point. Um, 625, you're correct. <laughs> um, I am here um, to, in opposition to Judge Bazzuto's reappointment. Um, I wanted to start off a little bit. We hear a lot about the judges, and I think sometimes um, the people are overlooked. I grew up in Southington. I'm actually very nervous. Um, grew up in Southington, um, graduated third in my class, went on to UConn, have an engineering degree, went on to RPI Hartford. I have a business degree. I'm a mother of five children. I've never had any, in, any trouble with the law until I entered family court. And the last 10 years of my life have been hell because of various judges. Um, I came here to speak against Judge Bizzuto, Um, But in that, I was reminded that it all started with Judge Edelman. He was actually the one, he says, that you know it starts with one bad judge. So we can add him to the list. But um, he made a decision to take my children away from me. I'm a woman, and gave them to my ex-husband, who was controlling, and there was money in the case. So, so many of the things that I'm hearing today um, are true over and over again. I've uh, put together a packet. I didn't know a lot of the rules. This is my first time. I've been very intimidated in the past from coming forward. But um, <laughs> the... Um, Take a breath. Yeah. Take a breath. <laughs> the, um, <clears throat> this is so hard. Um, Judge Bazzuto, my ex-husband was substantiated for neglect. In he drinks, he passes out. My children told several people this, um, and DCF did substantiate in 2015. And the end of that summer, my children didn't want to return to their father. They were taken into state custody. They spent the summer with my mother. They returned to my home, and it was time to go back to school, so that's when the child support and the, the programs that my ex-husband was on kicked back in. And I went to Judge Bizzuto's courtroom, and she had me arrested. She had me put in custody because my children wouldn't return to their father. Held me in Niantic overnight, and I have the order. I was released. My children were told that I would stay in jail until they went to their father's. And I have this in writing, Judge Bazzuto's order saying, release the prisoner, the children have returned to their mother. And she is just abusing her power and ruining my family. I have custody of one of my children who ran away and, you know, orders to, to do that. He ran overnight and um, came to my house and he has been living with me since January 2015 and I'm still paying child support to my ex-husband for the child that lives with me because Judge Bazzuto won't enter an order. I have orders, copies of orders, that show she won't let me file motions to modify. She won't let me um, file any motions at all. I have that in writing with her signature on it, saying that I cannot file a motion um, without requesting leave. I hired an attorney. He was unable to file a motion. She wouldn't allow my attorney to file motions to modify custody for the child that's living with me. So they Take a breath and just quickly summarize. <laughs> so, as I said, I'm here in opposition to Judge Pizzuto. I have nothing against the woman. My father actually used to drive trucks for her father. She probably doesn't know that because my father was just a hardworking guy. And I live in this state. I'm a good mom. I'm a, I was a little league coach. I was a high school teacher. I work for a bank. I've had background checks done on me. Um, Judge Pizzuto has ordered therapy that I have to go to. 12 months of consecutive therapy before I can file a motion to see my children. I do not, I have not seen my three children in months and they have not seen their brothers and she's keeping them separate and there's nothing pending. She's released all the GALs. She, I can't afford lawyers and I don't see my kids and there's nothing I can do. Can't file a motion. All right. Thank you. Any questions? Representative Gonzalez. <laughs> <clears throat> Don't cry. I do. I know he's hard. You can't imagine how it feels to not see your children. I have 13-year-old twin girls and an 11-year-old boy that I haven't seen in months. I haven't given. I didn't see him for Christmas. My grandmother turned 99 years old. They couldn't go to her birthday party, and Judge Bizzuto stopping it for no reason. 
um, um, that your son, I heard the story. There was your son, the one that ran away. And then I, what I heard was in court, I think that, that, she, that Jack Pesuto said that unless he'll come back, they will arrest you, something like that? Yes. Okay. And, and what happened? They were checking into your family to see where was your son? My son came, he ran to my house. Right. So he ran away from his father's house to my house. And what they made him go back and he ran away again. And he ran away. Okay. Yes. So he ran away the second time. Yes. Okay. And after the second time, now he's, he's with you. Then they decided that it was too much of a risk. So that's when Judge Bazzuto allowed him to live with me. I still have to pay child support for him to my ex-husband. My ex-husband still has sole legal custody, even though he hasn't spoken to him in two years. And he can't see his sisters or his brother. Okay, so the other kids, uh, did they want any problems because they didn't want to go to with the father? Yes. And it was a threat by the judge, Basuro. It wasn't a threat. She, I mean, and the, the orders are included in this, but she basically told me to bring my children to my ex-husband. He lives in um, Trumbull. Mm -hmm. And the children refused to get in the car. They didn't want to go back. Judge Edelman mentioned reunification therapy. After my children had been my, removed from DCF and spent three months away from their father, they were just ordered back to start school in his house. Um, they had, as I said, they had alleged that he was drinking and passing out and they were putting themselves <laughs> to bed. Um, and, you know, they use, an, it's very hard, the parental alienation. Judge Bazzuto is using parental alienation, saying that I'm alienating my children. But DCF did an investigation and substantiated neglect. So I'm protecting my children. It's very different. And even if, I mean, again, there's no testimony from any professionals that indicates that I have any psychological issues. As I said, I, I work in finance. I've had background checks time and time again. I, I'm an upstanding member of society, and she's treating me worse than a criminal or worse than a drug addict or worse than somebody who has a problem, and, I'm, and I don't know why I'm being treated that way. Um, and I, I try to follow the rules, but they're very inconsistently applied. Um, so I'm just at a loss, and I'm here because something needs to change. And I know I filed an appeal against Judge Bazzuto, When I did that, she stopped allowing me to have hear case, have any motions in her court. When I dropped it, then the next hearing was held. So there's, there's, no matter what you do, you lose. Once you lose. a judge decides that you're not going to see your kids, it's just a power. It's just her will. So, so after the 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 other kids, they were with you, and they didn't want to go back to the father. So it was a threat. To, to the kid saying, if your mother, can you, can you say something? Like sure. She basically, my mother, when I went to court the day that I ended up being taken into custody, my mother had stayed with my children. So I went to court for 10 o'clock by 11 o'clock. I was in custody. Um, a social worker and a therapist, the GAL and a social worker were sent to my house. My mother was watching the children. And from 11 o'clock till 7 o'clock at night, they were trying to convince my children to return to their father. And my mother, you know, was there. They didn't give my children lunch. They didn't give my children dinner. And they were telling my children that they had to go with their dad or I would stay in prison until they did. So they threat your kids. Yes. That's one of the questions that I did ask today because I heard the story. Uh, so now you're still working in your case. Um, no, it's dead. I mean, I, I've been post-judgment. We were actually divorced in New Jersey. And like many of the cases, my ex-husband and I had done well financially. Um, we're not anymore. I mean, everything has been taken. Our children's. Um, college funds have been liquidated. We've been ordered to liquidate 401ks. Um, there, it's just been nonstop since 2008. And we're both out of money. My husband's, you know, I'm paying, t more of my paycheck goes to debt than it goes to anything else. And I, I'm trying to dig out, but I don't, I don't see my kids. I mean, it's, it's horrible, but I don't see my twin daughters and my youngest son at all. I was ordered to supervise visit, and then the supervised visit raised the price. 
and I don't have the money. Judge um, Bazzuto ordered me into therapy, and the, she named my therapist, so she's choosing who I should see. She says I have to go, even though I have a letter from Weather, uh, Wheeler Clinic saying that I don't need services, that my only issue is ongoing litigation. Um, I've had two PhDs that have written letters and have testified psychologist saying that my only issue is ongoing litigation and that I'm actually dealing with it better than most would <laughs> and she just she's using in, in this packet it shows that she will not let me see my children until I complete 12 consecutive months of therapy and I'm not allowed to file motions until I do so even if I had some sort of mental disorder that's not supposed to prevent me from seeing my children so either way even if let's say she was right that's not a reason for me not to see my children who has to pay for for um for you to go to the to um to the evaluation uh for the therapy for the therapy me so you have to pay yes and i can't and and how much they it's 150 dollars a week a week and how many times you go i have to go four times a month for 12 consecutive months before she'll allow me to visit my children. And I, as I said, I have a wheeler, I have a letter that she won't even look at that says that I do not have mental issues. So that's $600 a month. Yeah. And how On much top you, of child support. How much you pay for child support? I pay um, $150 a week, which is withheld from my paycheck, which is supposed to be for four children. But the fourth one lives with me. So I did get custody of the one. So I also have to support him in my home while I pay for the support of him in another home, and I have a student, a son at UConn. So I have a fifth child up at the University of Connecticut. So right now, what do you have to wait, what do you have to do is go on therapy uh, for whatever time, a and year. then go back to court. That's she won't let me file motions until I go to therapy. That's what, I mean, it's in writing. I'm not making it up. Everyone can have a copy of it. The orders that judge, they have Judge Rizzuto's signatures on, how she incarcerated me, I mean, it has just been horrific. It's been a horrific experience for me and my children and my ex-husband. I mean, I can't imagine that this has been fun for him either. So so she wanted you to go to therapy. Yep. Um, and and that's the only, the only way that you will see your kids? Yes. But you don't know for sure if that's going to happen. Right, because for eight years it's been hoop after hoop after hoop. So one of the problems when they start down this path of reunification therapy or evaluations, we had evaluations ordered back, um, I'm just, I think it was it was between Edelman and Bazzuto, but they ordered the evaluations. They ordered that my ex-husband sign the release. My ex-husband wouldn't sign the release for the evaluation and you had $20,000 out the window because he wouldn't sign the release to release his evaluation once it was done and paid for. And so we never even saw him. Who paid the $20,000? My ex-husband and I. And and he paid $20,000 to the therapy that he... Yes. She... They were recommended. It was uh, Horowitz. Uh, I mean, they're names that pop up over and over again. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, you know, Steve Dembo was the GAL. So it was back in the time of the hearings so for the GAL. Right. Right before that, when everyone was ordering evaluation, so I mean that contributed to our financial situation now. So, so you have to go to the therapy, and then, uh, and then her friend is making money out of out of you. Right, she That's... names the three people that I have to go to therapy to. I can't even choose my own provider. And as I said, I've provided letters, but she won't look at them. She won't let them be admitted into evidence that I have been evaluated that I have seen professionals and that it's like someone saying you have to get heart surgery and you go to a heart special and they say you don't need it and someone saying no you have to get it to see your children it, it's just it's the same thing only a different field it's just about money it's not in the best interest of the I really don't know what it's about because at this point it's not about money anymore there's not it, it, there's it's just about preventing me from seeing my children at this point because I can't pay the money and she knows it she's seen my financial affidavits She sees that I'm credit card debt. My house has been refinanced. I mean, there's no money left. So even though, let's say that, that, let's say that you go to therapy, um, you're not afraid of retaliation? You know, of course here? I am, but the woman who said, um, all I have left is my life. I mean, I do have my one son, my two sons that live with me, but three of my kids I don't see. And I feel like that. That's all I have left is my life, and my children are being cared for by 
a, a man who drinks, and he's he's court ordered that I'm supposed to be able to have phone conversation, and he's controlling and doesn't let me talk to my children. I haven't spoken to them in months. I didn't say hello to them for Christmas. Well, I I, I feel sorry. So it is it is judges, but it's also the empowerment of judges, and and they empower abusers, and yeah. you know. Th- every case there's a piece of it that's very similar to mine so it's not isolated incidents it's an inconsistent application of the statutes one time i mean there's a a gentleman from my town his wife is keeping the children from him she's not charged i can't force my children back i'm charged with custodial interference so it's the exact same thing one person's charged another person's not yeah i heard about that and i know that they they do whatever they feel like it and and they want to go after you they go after you they're gonna they're supposed to be neutral i, I feel but like it's not you know, happening. as a parent especially of twin daughters i feel like it's bad parenting that you know they do one thing for one and you can't figure out the rules because they're constantly changing right well i'm very sorry that you're going through that um, thank you I hope you guys can change it. I mean, we need some new judges that can do this right because the ones that are in there are not doing it right. And maybe they're doing it right 90% of the time. I'm a financial advisor. If I did one thing, first of all, someone would make it right. I have insurance. And second of all, there would be, on my, you know, on my FINRA applications, there would be consequences for professionals, and there don't seem to be consequences for these judges for, missing, for messing up family after family. I mean, if I did it once, there would be investigations and, you know, making it whole. There never seems to be a process to make it whole, to put it back the way it should be, to get a, a caring, loving mother back into the life of her lives of her children. Yeah. I have no criminal history. I have no substantiation for neglect. I would love an explanation why I can't see my children. Thank you very much. I'm very sorry. Thank you. Any further questions? Representative O'Day. Mr. Uh, Chairman, if, if you could just arrange to have the, um, the, the documents that she was referencing Absolutely. left you, with the clerk. Yeah, the clerk, yeah. Thank you. Do you have, a, you have a, how many copies do you have? Not that it matters. Really. We'll make copies. <laughs> 20 plus. I yeah, all right. So we'll make copies. The staff, I trust have me. an original if it's easier to make copies, too. <laughs> Madam Clerk, maybe uh, Madam Administrator. Because I did make it two-sided to save a couple trees. Deb. She, she has the original. It might be better for you for copies. Or? Okay. Yeah. Trust me, the committee will have them and we'll be I them. appreciate that. And like I said, her signature's on here. She's making these orders and incarcerating parents. Thank you. Uh, Representative Day, any further questions in the committee? Representative? Um, thank you for coming out and, and giving us your story. Um, I. I just had one quick question. You you'd said that um, how much money you've spent. Um, could you explain what you spent all this money on? Lawyers, evaluations. Um, we came when we, we came to Connect. We had we were already post judgment. We had been divorced in New Jersey, so um, it's been. I've had I got three different GALs. Basically, what happens is we pay you know, retainers, and we get to a certain point, and it it just becomes this churning of your next court date, your next court date. Every time you go to court, it's at least four hours. That's for the GAL? No, just because you sit in court. If you're on short calendar, you don't get scheduled. You have to sit there until it's your turn, and the lawyers are collecting the whole time. Oh, lawyers. Okay. Yep, lawyers. And then if I have a lawyer and my ex has a lawyer and we have a GAL, that's $3,000 every time you go, and it could get continued. You can go to court, get billed for the transportation, and it's not on. Somebody doesn't show up or it gets continued. So the process is designed to get money away from the parents. It's not there to solve problems. My ex-husband and I had an agreement coming to Connecticut. And it's just been, I mean, Edelman said it himself. A judge makes a bad decision. I don't think it's by accident. And they get you fighting. And you're already in a rough place. I mean, I had five, I have five children. They were five very small children when we came to Connecticut. 
And so it's just, it's that when you, when a bad decision is made for a mother, it rips your heart out. And so there's nothing you won't give and they know it. You know, there's nothing you won't give for your children. And I've given everything well, if, to if, try to make it right. If, if you had an agreement when you came to Connecticut, what were you doing in court in the first place? My ex-husband wanted to change the agreement. So um, I had custody. I had the children. He was working. I had gone back to work. He was unemployed. And he can file a motion to modify, which is fine. But Judge Adelman switched custody from me to my ex-husband. That's going to cause problems. You know, you don't just take young children, I mean, preschool age children, away from their mother because she, her, their father is unemployed and you go back to work. You know, so it's just this, they make a bad decision to get a parent, to get the parents fighting. I mean, he said it, he said it nicely, but the fact of the matter is they do it to incite fighting. They do it to get people who are already on the brink of not getting along back to fighting. And why would you think that judges would try to get people fighting? Um, in my, and again, I don't think they do it in all cases, but I think the cases where there's a lot of money, um, I guess you have to ask them, but a lot of money went to a lot of lawyers and experts and friends of the court and GALs, and you see it, there's, there's a certain type of case that becomes the high conflict case, and it's people with money or people with children with special needs, and again, I've been through it for eight years now, so I see the people who are struggling, they usually meet those parameters. Special needs kids means that you have to have a lot of experts assigned. They can get away with it. If it's a high conflict case, I mean, if it's a high net worth case, I guess there's more to fight over, but at the same time, there's more for the lawyers to get. The first thing you fill out when you hire a lawyer is a financial affidavit. They know exactly what they're dealing with. They know exactly who has money. Two minutes after you hire them, they say you have to do this. Hindsight, now you know. It's like, okay, no financial affidavit. But as soon as you hire a lawyer, when you first go into family court, they know exactly what your net worth is. Right, but that money doesn't go to the judicial branch, right? Um, I mean, there's there's all sorts of theories out there. <laughs> well, is it is it your is it your position that the judicial branch is conspiring in some way with these attorneys to to use families as cash cows there, there's um there's a lot there's a lot of theories and I, I am an educated woman so i know that there's things that people say that can't be proven and then you know but after time um some of the things with um shared parenting versus a, a captain you know like they give custody from one to the other rather than doing a 50 50 there's matching federal funds for child support from what I understand so the more child support that changes hands there's federal money that comes into the state I don't know why a judge would care you know I, there's just so many things I don't understand but there does seem to be a financial incentive even if it's just they're helping other lawyers I, I don't know what the motivation is I just know it doesn't make sense for a mother with no criminal record no history of abuse or neglect not to be able to see her children I don't think that makes sense. So if you can help me figure that out, I'd love to know. But, you know, there's there's only so much I can do. I'm raising five kids. I'm working. I'm paying. I'm trying to, you know, advocate to get my rights that I should have had a hearing. There should have been so many things that happened before I'm in this place. And I, I they didn't. And Judge Mazzuto was the one that's in charge of that. She is the one that is supposed to make sure that my children see their mother. Now, I I was just handed a, a little stack of documents. Yep. Um, in addition to this, did you put, submit any testimony? No, I wasn't sure I was going to come forward today. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much. I, I appreciate your time. I th appreciate you coming in. Thank you. Thank uh, you, Mr. Thank you. Senator Gomes. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I just want to make a few comments and. I've listened to you, and I'm very sympathetic about your problems and so on and so forth. And um, some people may not believe this, but too big a story for you to invent. That's what I'm going to say to begin with. And the thing with it is, I believe in certain professions that people cover each other. And this might be one of them. And we're 
we're between a rock and a hard place. We don't want to um, discard everything that judges say because we look for them to to, um, to, to do their job and, and professionally um, people that are not criminals or not doing something that's wrong to be protected. And it seems like sometimes, and this will happen in any profession, any profession, whether it be lawyers, it be judges, it be just somebody in, in business or whatever, people have this thing about covering themselves. When I was in the Army, I worked in administration, and I seen it there, too. So what I'm saying is uh, I'm very sympathetic by what you're saying. I don't know what we can do about it because uh, um, we'd like to look into this, and um, I have your thing here. But the, the thing it is, is, it puts us as lay people. I'm not a, I'm not a lawyer or anything. Uh, even, even in my profession, I was an international rep for union. I was an international union rep. But the thing it is, in any profession, you'll find people, birds of a feather flock together and cover each other. And, uh, and uh, I'm just wondering if this is one of the things that we're talking about here. And, I, I and if it is, it needs to stop somewhere. And, uh, and I, that's all I have to say. I don't know what I'm going to do about it, you know. Because like I, I, I said, I don't want to bash I don't want to bash judges either uh, for no no reason. But I think we're here to listen to what is happening to people. We don't want people coming before us and listen to their story and discard everything they're saying. So I, I just want you to know that. And if I, you look at this, there's no way you can discard it. It has her signature on well, it. You, uh, and, you've, um, you've said you know, enough I, to make me interested. I'll tell they, you that. Um, as, as far as a solution, I, you know, again, I'm a businesswoman. It has to, there has to be some oversight. When a grievance is filed, it has to be taken seriously. It's not. I mean, it, it, maybe it's the birds of the feather, but I filed grievances. I filed three of them to only have them returned. There's a zero percent. Zero percent. Nobody that I know has filed a grievance and had any sort of action taken. So there really does have to be some, the laws I think are good. And, and sadly, you know, you hear these things, but I don't think the problem's with the law. I think the problem is with the implementation of the law. And it's getting, I don't know if it's a task force or a committee or somebody that can go in and say, we need to relook at that, that judgment. It's just not right. There's no way to do it. Appeals take two years and $20,000. When I had my first bad decision, I went to another family lawyer, and that's what she told me. She says it takes two years and $20,000 minimum. And in order to... She said you're better off to file a motion for modification and try to change the bad order rather than go and try to prove the order is bad. That doesn't work. <laughs> you know, that, that's not what a mother whose children are growing, you don't have two years. I mean, a 9-year-old to an 11-year-old, you miss so much. You know, whatever age it is, 2 to 4, you don't have two years. So the system is not designed, it's designed for criminal cases, it's designed for a finding, it's not designed for a fluid um, situation where the kids are growing. And you know what, sometimes the dad's unemployed, sometimes the mom's unemployed. The things need to be able to change without it being six months or a year to figure it out. You go in, I mean, to change child support, it's now been almost two years for me to change my child support. It's a simple calculation. I'm an engineer, I could figure it out in a half an hour, Yet the judicial, we can't. I can't seem to get it changed in two years, and it's Title Four. It's federally mandated, and it's not being followed. You know whether these judges become reconfirmed or not, and go back to their job or whatever. No matter what happens here, it is valuable for people like you to come forth and tell your story to let people know that these things can happen. Yep. Uh, oh, you'd yeah. be a. You'd be, you could write a book at, um, uh, if you could invent all the things that you've said and not be true. But well, the thing I mean, of it is, I, 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 believe, I believe that you, you did go through some real changes. Um, one of the th points I wanted to make is, you know, this is happening to my mother's daughter. This is happening to you. It could happen to you people you know. It can oh, happen yeah. to your kids. It can happen to your grandchildren. It can happen to your sisters. It can happen to anybody. Um, it's sad that, you know, Judge Edelman... I truly believe he does have an issue with women to take, you know, when we had an agreement that I would raise my children to take my children away from me, <laughs> take them out of Glastonbury and move them to Norwalk at the time. Why would someone do that? It just, it, it is beyond me, but he has the power to do it. And Bazudo follows it up. It's funny how they, they played off each other as if they were friends, you know, <laughs> it, it, it just, it, 
in hearing the testimony, it made me feel more strongly about coming forward because there's so many um, consistencies in the inconsistency. So many of the same things are happening. You, you hear about wealthier people. You, you hear about disabilities. That's, that's a pattern. All right, thank you. Sure. Thank you for your testimony. Thank you. Any further questions from the committee members? Seeing none, thank you very much. You. Next speaker is Peter Nissitz and Dan Lynch, Jane Doe, Pink Sweater, Hector Marina, Mike Nowacki. Right, I, I'm going to step out in the hall. I am.